Welcome to this introductory series of training videos for SolidCam. This video's topic is facing operation or face turning. Uh, so in this video, we'll be talking about the facing operation from the turning or mill turn module from SolidCam. Um, and pretty much facing is just doing the front face or back face of your part, depending on your setup. Uh, and all it is is just gonna be a movement in the X direction. Um, so to get to the facing operation, you can go to solid cam turning, face, or you can right click on your setup, add turning operation, and face. So the workflow of the turning operations is pretty much gonna be the same throughout all the tool path. Uh, you'll start with your geometry, you'll choose your tool, and then you'll go to your technology and set up the parameters of the actual toolpath. So let's start by getting the geometry. So the geometry for a facing operation is just gonna be that front face. Now, if you're using wireframe like I am here, I'll click on the line that represents the front face for my target profile. To review how to create the target profile, I'll refer you to the getting started in the turning and mill turn cam part video. Uh, so to get that line, I'll just click on that, click the green check mark, and that's pretty much it. That line represents the front face of my target, but not my stock. So when I click the green check mark to accept that geometry, I'll come back to this window and I'll click on modify geometry. And then what we'll see is it auto extends to the start of the stock by default, and I'm also going to get it to auto extend to the end of the stock. That way I can go from the end of that line that I chose to the end of the stock there as it was defined. And again, the stock and target were defined in the uh, cam part video I referenced a second ago. Okay, so let's go to tool and click select. So in the operation manager, all we have to do is click select to get to the toolkit. And then from there, I'll either select a tool that I've already uh, defined or I'll define one on the fly. To create turning tools, I'll refer you to the creating turning tool video in this introductory series. But to shortcut all this, I'm just gonna grab my external turning from my turning catalog, drag it over. That should define it as having a shank and a insert. And I'm just gonna quickly define this insert as a CNMG 432. Okay, and then for facing, I'm gonna want this thing to be oriented in the X positive direction. So I'll go to my connection section of my toolkit. And I'm just gonna say, rotate this guy 90 degrees around the Y axis. Uh, and that's my mistake. So one thing you gotta note with the toolkit is I'm currently on the insert. I meant to actually rotate the shank. So now I can put this at zero. There it is. Okay, so that's actually what I was looking for. Okay, so with that tool mounted in X, I can see down here that it's mounted like that. Now for this particular machine, I could actually get it to uh, mount in a whole bunch of different directions. But in my case, I'm looking to come just from the X positive. I'll let it mount like that. Okay, let's go to, if we go to levels, you'll see under levels, all you're really controlling in all our turning tool paths in the level section is just the safety distance away from the part. So the updated stock, the target, it'll make sure that any repositioning it does within a turning tool path is that distance away from the solid stock or the target. It's in the technology section that you're actually gonna control the main parameters of this tool path. And in the case of face turning, we're actually giving it either face turning mode in the front, or face turning mode in the back. Now the back and the front is really just referring to the Z axis. If you recall from the getting started in, in turning cam part video, we, we created two corner systems, one for the front and one for the back. The back meaning that if I took it out and flipped it around, or if this was on a, a dual spindle machine, the Z axis would be pointing in the same direction and all we would be doing is a part transfer from the main to the sub. If you're doing a part transfer from the main to the sub, and you're actually trying to face turn on the sub spindle with that Z in the same direction, then any, any turning you do on this side is gonna be considered to be the back. So that's what back turning is all about. It's just assuming that the Z is in the same direction going that way, and you're doing face turning on this side with the tool that is facing in that direction. 
But in our case, we're on the main spindle, we're doing the front face of the part, we'll keep using front. Every turning toolpath is a stock recognition toolpath because of the fact that we've given it the stock and the target, it knows where that material is. In this case, it knows about the 20 thou material that I left on the front face of that part. If I just get us this turning view here, there's about 20 thou material there. So I don't have to give it a start position and end position of the toolpath, I just have to drive it by the stock. Now you'll see this a lot in the turning toolpaths, but for facing specifically, you might need to just true up the face or clean up the face, and you might not actually have any stock left. You can always use extend target by, or target extension by. Uh, and what this will do is give you almost like a clear offset. It'll allow you to go from this line, tell it how much material there is, and it'll actually machine that material, despite the fact that there is no material there. Again, stock recognition C needs to see material, so if you ever get an error message that says toolpath is empty, it's because you've already faced it or finished it to a point where there is no material left on that face. Direction, if you have the type of insert that can do a zigzag cut, you'll do zigzag, otherwise you can leave it as one way. Rough type, we have smooth versus stairs. All that's really gonna do is it's going to move uh, along the part in a certain direction. Smooth versus stairs, we don't really see too much uh, of difference in the face turning operation. This is something you'll see more when you do turn in. So I'll refer you to the turning operation video to, um, to review that. Uh, in terms of roughing, there's our equal step over across whatever material we've left there. Obviously, if we're doing roughing, I'm going to leave some material on that Z face. So that is the amount of material I leave there. Retreat distance. With each pass that I take for this 40 thou cut, I'll retreat, I'll retreat by a certain amount and reposition that face right there, uh, that value right there. Um, if your post allows for the use of cycles, you can just turn on the cycle here. And in this case, after doing some roughing passes, I might want to take one final finishing cut. I can just check that box for finish, and then that gives me the, the ability to add a compensation. Under link, you can see that you do have control over the lead in lead out, but because of that safety distance and that retraction distance, chances are you're not really going to need, need to do this. You're already uh, exiting the part before you reposition. But you do want to take note of your approach point and your retract point. Anytime you're working on the front face of the part, you'll have a right safety corner that you'll retract to and approach from, but you also have the ability here to set it up to come from different directions. So this could help be helpful if there's a certain feature on your part where you need to approach from X first, possibly, because of the movement of the tool. Or if you're trying to shortcut the production of your part, and there really is no need to constantly retract back to the right safety corner in between tool paths, you can always do things like from previous or none or whatever it is that would make sense. Or if you're working on the sub spindle, you'll switch it to left safety corner. That way you're not gonna crash into your, uh, into your spindle. So let's create this tool path by clicking on save and calculate. And you'll see that it does the finishing passes. So because there was 20 thou material there, but I'm taking 40 thou cuts, there's definitely gonna be one roughing pass. And because I told it to do a finishing pass, there's the second pass there as well. So from the right safety corner, we wrap it over, one pass, Retreat, reposition, and another pass, and now the part has been faced. Any questions of this or anything else from Solicam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this introductory series. Thanks for watching.